Southeast, then as a professional. Driving in the Kelly American Challenge Series, Lynn was named the top woman driver at the end of her first pro season. She won that title again in 1981 and 1982. In 1984, she was honored as Auto Week Magazine's IMSA Camel GT Rookie of the Year. Then, in 1985, she made motorsports history. She became the first woman ever to win a major American road race, nearly lapping the field at Watkins Glen in her motorcraft Ford Mustang. Cars have become the focus of Lynn's life. Even when she's not racing, nearly everything she does is somehow connected to her passion for the automobile. At home in Florida, she's the owner of Autodyne, a distributor of performance auto parts. As far as you know, it was in its own box when we sent it out with the hardware. Yeah. Even when she sits at her piano or works out at the health club, cars and racing are always on Lynn's mind. Every piano is different. And so you have to learn to get the most out of that piano in the same way with driving a race car. Driving a race car is very, very physically demanding and mentally demanding. And what happens in the process of driving a race is that if you get physically tired, then it puts even a bigger drain on you mentally. So it's very, very important to be in good physical condition. It's been known that if you take two equal cars and two equally talented race car drivers, the one in better physical condition will win the race. So it, it can be the difference between winning at the end of a race and, and finishing second. Lynn St. James is a winner, and she shares her winning philosophy with audiences across the country. We do have an awful lot in common. Uh, you are at the top of your careers and in your chapters, and I'm also at the top of mine. Women can do anything. We can achieve it. We can go for it. And I hope to see you all in Victory Lane. Thank you. But now that women are showing that they can do it and that they should be accepted and that they are not only good enough, but they're even better than a lot of the men, I think that that is changing those attitudes. It's difficult. God knows it's difficult. But Lynn St. James thrives on challenge, and she's about to take on the biggest challenge of her racing career. She will drive this high-performance racing machine around the world's fastest speedway in an attempt to become the fastest woman ever to lap a racetrack. Her goal, 200 miles an hour. major auto races like the Indy 500 were won on Goodyear Racing Eagles. That's more than nine times as many wins as all other makes of tires combined. And that proven Goodyear quality is why more people decide you either have Goodyear Eagles or you need them. In her quest to top 200 miles per hour, Lynn St. James has come to the world's fastest speedway in Talladega, Alabama. And here to show her the quickest way around this track is the reigning king of Talladega, NASCAR star, Bill Elliott. Talladega is a racetrack within itself, and here you just get on a racetrack and you put the pedal to the floor and go on. Twice a year, Elliott and 39 other NASCAR drivers compete here at Talladega. More than 100,000 fans jam the grandstands and infield. Driving this red number nine Ford Thunderbird, Elliott set the track record for stock cars here during 1985. 
and enjoyed one of his greatest victories. He led the race in the early going, then fell nearly two laps off the pace before coming back to win the fastest 500-mile race ever run. Bill Elliott, a man who has taken on Talladega and beaten it, but a man who understands that Talladega can fight back. I think the major difficulty of driving Talladega is just feeling the speed. And once you go out and get used to the car, it's knowing the limitations of the car and knowing what the edge is, and then just getting used to the speed. The thing about it is you can't make a mistake here. It's not that hard to drive, but you can't make a mistake here at Talladega. Bill didn't make any mistakes at Talladega during 1985, winning both NASCAR races on the tough tri-oval. St. James drives out onto this high-speed track, there will be no cheering crowds in the grandstands. She will be alone, facing Talladega all by herself. Inside this truck is the vehicle Lynn will drive, the Ford Probe, a racing machine designed to compete against some of the most sophisticated race cars in the world. Sleek, slippery, aerodynamic, powered by a turbocharged four-cylinder engine, only 129 cubic inches, but capable of producing an incredible 650 horsepower. The pedal's gonna be kinda soft because it's got carbon brakes and they always bleed up real soft. Okay. Plus there's a little the angle. The challenge Lynn faces is to take the probe out on an unfamiliar racetrack and push it to its limits. To squeeze the maximum out of the four cylinders. To lap the high bank Talladega trioval at more than 200 miles per hour. Although Lynn has never raced at Talladega, she has tested the probe several times on twisting road race courses in California. I think the most phenomenal thing about the probe that we all forget, because you're capsulized in there and then you see this neat little body, is it has this little turbocharged four-cylinder engine. But I want to tell you, when you put your foot on the gas, that thing lights up like it's been shot out of a cannon. You have to be absolutely ahead of all of that, and you have to be in control of it. Yeah, it's a lot of racetrack. Being in control is the key to conquering any racetrack, but especially Talladega. Bill Elliott has co-driven with Lynn, and he feels she has what it takes to challenge the super speedway. She's a good driver. She's a smart driver. She seems to do most, all the right things, all the right moves on a racetrack. She knows a good bit about the car. You know, that's what really surprised me about a lot of race car drivers. There's a lot of drivers out there that don't really understand the car, and I feel like she does in a lot of ways. Lynn's trip to Talladega is the culmination of a dream, a dream to go faster than any other woman, faster than most men. This all started when one day I happened to see a brochure from Talladega that was all of the records here set at Talladega. And I saw Mark Donahue's record at 221, which I'd heard about and read about. So I knew that existed, and I went down further on the list, and I saw this women's close course record, which was 180 mi 189 miles an hour. And I thought, I can't let that be. I've got to be able to get that better. If you're looking for a good time this summer, you're going to find it when this incredible special offer for cable TV arrives at your home. It's your ticket to HBO's fabulous summer celebration, a season of hit movies like Ghostbusters, the acclaimed drama Mask, The Mischief of Gremlins, The Power of Pale Rider. It's big events from sport on the court at Wimbledon to swings in the ring with heavyweight kings. It's concert spectaculars with Liza Minnelli, folkmaster Bob Dylan, and jokemaster Billy Crystal. It's month after month of top entertainment to put some sizzle into your summer. So celebrate. Get in on this amazing limited time offer to hook up HBO at a very special price. It could save you a bundle. So when you get this in the mail, just bust the ghost like this and say yes to incredible savings. Or call today. But don't wait. Get in on HBO's fabulous summer celebration right now. A person's accomplishments are most often measured in numbers, seconds, minutes, miles per hour. 
Since the automobile first became a part of our culture a century ago, someone has always tried to go faster. In the 1930s, Sir Malcolm Campbell drove his specially built five-ton behemoth called the Bluebird along the sands of Daytona Beach to a new speed record. Other records have been set by cars designed primarily for racing. But even an all-out racing machine, such as the Probe, had to be modified to meet the special requirements of a pure speed test. Lynn St. James knew it would take a team effort to break the 200 mile per hour barrier. Well, when I saw that, um, that there was the record and decided I was going to do it, obviously the first most important element was what race car was I going to be able to do it in. So I talked to Ford Motor Company, since they were my current sponsor, and they were interested in doing it. So I think they got interested from their own perspective because they knew that the Probe is their development car. It is the most sophisticated state-of-the-art equipment. This would be a way of displaying that equipment, putting it to a test and displaying it in a real positive sense. So they said, if you can put all of the other elements together, we are in. We were really interested. Um, then I thought the next most critical area is tires because that's what you're in touch with on the racetrack. And I knew that Goodyear would have to come in and, and give it full support. And so then I did approach Goodyear and talk to them about it because they had to develop a special tire for this. It wasn't a case where they just had to pull off the inventory, you know, 12 tires or something to, to go run at Talladega. Even after all the arrangements were made, the probe still had to be tested. Everything had to be just right before Lynn could buckle herself into the cockpit and try to drive into the record books. Ian Dawson, the crew chief, talks about the challenge. This is something that uh, can't really be achieved unless uh, the driver can give you good feedback for what you're doing. Um, but the tires that Goodyear have developed for this uh, run as well are also balanced to the chassis. So you work uh, in a three-directional, three you know, the driver's input, the tire manufacturer's input, and the engineers with it, and then uh, the team's ability then to adjust things to it. But Dawson's crew has plenty of experience at making a car at home on a racetrack. While the mechanics went about preparing the car, Lynn conferred with another member of the team, international racing veteran Doc Bundy. Doc has driven the probe in competition, and he was at Talladega to make sure the car was set up correctly. Before Lynn went out on the track, Bundy talked about what she would face. I've been with this car all year long, and to do what she's going to attempt is, is certainly tough. And, and unless you've ever lived at 200 mile an hour, there's no way you'll ever know it, sitting where you are. But believe me, it's tough to do. Before Lynn St. James could learn to live at 200, she would have to get used to living at speeds where every additional mile an hour means more effort, more concentration. The crew had done all it could. Now it was time for Lynn to help them make the final adjustments, to test the probe at speed, to drive around an unfamiliar racetrack and look for ways to go faster. Um, it's something that you have to become very, uh, feel one with, and it isn't something that over say two or three outings in the car that you can do uh, we're hoping that when she does get in the car that she will adapt well to what we've done and we will be able to make progressive steps through the day until we arrive at the position where we can go and break the records we're looking for each race car has its own personality and you're going to put that car to its test to the absolute limit of the capability of that car so you have to feel that that's a feel that you get through the seat of your pants and through the steering wheel and so you're playing that instrument, you're really getting the most out of it. By late in the day, more corrections and adjustments had been made. Lynn and the rest of the team kept working until the gathering darkness forced her into the pits. As the engine cooled, tire temperatures were taken. Lynn talked with the crew about how the car was handling, so the mechanics could adjust everything one more time. I was you know, able to, to feel the front, drive it at the front, Fine. but the back end is still having that sort back end. The stage was set. There was nothing to do now but wait for another dawn. The next time Lynn St. James climbed into the Ford Pro, she would be ready to drive past 200 miles per hour. Motorcraft quality parts spend their weekends meeting some grueling demands.
same motorcraft quality delivers dependable performance in your car every day. Motorcraft from Ford. fascinated with speed, but winning is more than a quest for speed. It's a measure of skill, a test of guts, and though NASCAR has changed through the decades, its spirit never will. It's not just the machine, it's the man who drives it. We're proud to be a part of this great sport. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. A clogged fuel injector can make your car slow, sluggish, unresponsive. But only two tankfuls of advanced formula mobile super unleaded can actually start to unclog fuel injectors to give your car a new injection of power. Mobile super unleaded, high octane, with a plus. It's a new day at Talladega, but this day is different. This day is special. There's a fresh mood in the pits. Everything moves a little more quickly. It feels like a race day morning, only different. After months of planning, after hours of testing, after running and rerunning 200 mile per hour laps in her mind, Lynn St. James is ready. Everything else is put aside now. Her entire being is focused on the racetrack and on the car she hopes will carry her to a record. It's what it's all about. I mean, we have to put up with, we, meaning race car drivers, have to, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of people, business between you and getting in that race car. The people of the crew, the people of the sponsors, the people of the media, the people of the fans, the people of the sanctioning body. There's all of these these things between you and the race car and then when you get in the car all of those things go away they all disappear and that's what it's all about that's what makes everything else worth because you get in the car and you become one with the car you're in total control of the car and it is the most phenomenal feeling in the whole world it's 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 peaceful it's hard to say that but with all the noise and all the you know and all the gauges and all the things it's it's very very peaceful in there you just it's like it's just the most comfortable, exciting place in the world for me to be. As she accelerated out of the pits and onto the racetrack, Lynn was all alone. There were no radio communications with her crew, no way for her to know her exact speed. Her job was to go as fast as she possibly could. She had only her own sense of the car's speed to tell her whether she was achieving her goal. But her senses were heightened, and she felt she was almost a part of the car. You feel everything instantly as the car feels changes, you feel them at the same time. Consequently, you can respond a lot sooner and you're right on top of it. You just feel everything the car is doing and it's a really neat feeling. In the pits, her progress was measured in numbers. Lap times were taken, then quickly converted to miles per hour. Nine, one, four, zero, nine, five, nine. Suddenly, Lynn had turned a lap at 195, making her the fastest woman ever to circle a racetrack. But her goal was still five miles an hour away. Individual lap 
time, 197.938. Nearly 198, just a slow walk short of 200. There was some doubt on Pitt Road. Could she go any faster? Inside the probe, Lynn could sense she was getting very close. She had to decide whether to push for even more speed, knowing that every mile an hour more brought her closer to the edge of control. She stayed out. You're the pilot, and you, except you feel the ground, so you're in touch with the ground, and you've got all that power, that surge of power that comes on, and, I mean, the car can get sideways real easy, and so you've got to keep the car going straight, and, and then once you get it up to speed, it, 200 or plus miles an hour, it's then like threading a needle. You're literally looking, at 200 miles an hour, you're approaching all of the things ahead of you very quickly, but yet you still have to look way down ahead. You, that's the whole, the whole key of driving a car is to be always ahead of the car and not the car ahead of you. And at 200 miles an hour, that means you just have to mentally make those decisions a lot quicker. So you're looking down exactly where you want to be and at the same time making any corrections that the car is telling you to make. You want to turn in a little sooner, you want to pinch it a little more, you want to let it out a little bit so that the car glides. Um, it's, but it all happens very, very quickly. When you come to Talladega, you know, it's, it's got the reputation of being the speed track. Because of the high banks and fairly long straightaways, it, it is fast. The only problem is it just scares the hell out of you to do it. But by now, Lynn St. James was too busy concentrating to be scared. And suddenly, 200 miles an hour came and went. One more lap, and a final speed of 204.223. The dream had become a reality. My only reason for driving a race car is because I love it more than anything else in the world, and I think I do it better than I do anything else in the world. The best way to tackle a hot job is to get right down to it. And when you can stand tall, you head for the mountains. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream, for a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. I wanted new golf clubs. I didn't buy the first ones I saw. I asked a pro. But when I needed a trimmer to keep my beard and mustache looking great, I didn't ask anyone. I bought the best around. The Groomsman by Wall. With a one-of-a-kind attachment for virtually foolproof trimming. Wall invented the electric clipper almost 70 years ago, and they're still number one with hairstyling pros. So why didn't I ask a pro about Wall? I didn't have to. I am a pro. The Groomsman and other fine products by Wall. Ask a pro. Sunday, ESPN's off and running on the world's fastest super speedway with live coverage of NASCAR's Winston 500. It's 200 mile an hour excitement at Talladega, and the half million dollar purse makes for high speed, high stakes drama. The Winston 500, live Sunday on ESPN. Tonight, live Stanley Cup playoff action on ESPN. Calgary and St. Louis shoot it out in the Campbell Conference Finals, live tonight. As she drove onto Pitt Road at Talladega for the last time, Lynn St. James knew that she had achieved her goal, her one-lap record of 204.223 miles per hour, which set a standard for other women to emulate. And there were plenty of other reasons to celebrate as well. On her way to the single-lap record, Lynn had set 12 other national and international marks. She didn't need a checkered flag, or a victory stand, or a silver trophy. The satisfaction of having been in the car at speed was more than enough. And 10 kilometers under 97. That should be dramatically high. Yeah, yeah. Good. 
we're a race car and now we can go and do something when we set it up properly next year so now we can settle down for serious drinking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a beer yeah, yeah what you've been waiting for <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. well, we thank you we uh, don't have you a beer <laughs> because we couldn't get one last night uh, so it was important that we went there without making a false impression that we'd built something purely to go as quick as possible. We went there into the same circumstances as previous women's records had been set, with a car that could have been taken that day to a track and been probably put on pole position for a race that it was built to do. I think that women are now achieving such fantastic things in non-traditional areas across the board, in all areas of, in this world, that motor racing is just one area that is another one to add to the list, and I'm pleased about that.